First thing to know about mountain cedar, they technically aren't cedar trees at all. Mountain cedar is actually an ash juniper. It's in the juniper family, not the cedar family. True cedar trees reside near the Mediterranean Sea, around Europe and Northern Africa. But juniper trees do bear some resemblance to cedars. So a lot of explorers, when they were first coming to the Western United States, uh, encountering these trees, they just referred to them as cedars because of that resemblance. And that's the way it's been for hundreds of years. We simply call ash juniper trees mountain cedar. So we don't fight it anymore. We just accept it. Cedar resides throughout Texas, even up near the DFW Metroplex, stretching into Oklahoma and parts of Arkansas. But a dense cedar forest exists in the Texas Hill Country. Because they really thrive on limestone soils, hilly environments, areas that don't have very deep soil at all. And it's this part of Texas, around San Antonio, Austin, and the Hill Country, where we really feel the impacts from cedar pollen. Itchy eyes, watery eyes, sneezing fits, followed by just copious amounts of mucus, lots of tissue. Not all cedar trees are bad for your allergies, though. Did you know that there are male and female cedar trees? And the female cedars, only distinguishable by their juniper berries, produce no pollen and no allergies whatsoever. That's the fault of the male mountain cedar trees. Now, every December through mid-February, the male mountain cedar trees produce these cones, which have inside of them lots and lots of pollen. Now, those cones will open up when weather conditions are right, and the wind takes all of that pollen to the waiting female mountain cedar trees and unfortunately to our eyes and sinuses as well. There are over 35 million tons of cedar trees in the Texas Hill Country. The Texas A&M Forest Service tracks trees by weight. They spit out pollen for nearly two months, reaching a peak of 20 to 32,000 pollen grains per cubic meter of air, or roughly a three foot by three foot space. So it's no wonder that many grow to hate the mountain cedar and its dreaded pollen. Perhaps it's that dread that's helped inspire myths about mountain cedar. So let's do some myth busting. This is false. Mountain cedar trees are native to central Texas. We have geological evidence of, of them being here for a very long time. In the past, people around the Texas Hill Country have used cedar wood as a natural resource, building fences and other infrastructure. If you look at some of the old pier and beam houses, you can still see the cedar posts that are supporting those houses. That being said, poor land management in the past 70 years or so has led to a general increase in all trees across the Hill Country. This includes both oaks and junipers, but it's the cedars that sprout quickly. Whenever you take everything out, it's one of the first things to regrow. And it's that quick regrowth of cedars that has led to the belief that the tree is invasive. But when you break it down, mountain cedar trees are undoubtedly native to central Texas. It's been here for tens of thousands of years, and it will be here for much longer, I'm sure. This myth comes from the belief that cedar trees use more water than other trees across the hill country. But recent research has proved that this is false. It's not true that they take up any more water than any of the other valued trees in our area, like an oak tree. It is true, however, that the needles or leaves of the cedar trees trap light rain, especially when the trees are packed close together. When they get in such dense stands, it just doesn't allow that precipitation to filter down into the soils. But during healthy rain events, heavily forested mountain cedar can actually direct rainwater into the aquifer. Having that dense a layer of needles on the ground can really help to retain water on the ground, soak in and infiltrate, as opposed to running into creeks and rivers where it might just go away as flood water. exposed to mountain cedar pollen for a few weeks each year. That's not enough time for our bodies to get used to the pesky pollen. So people don't naturally develop an to cedar. Once you're allergic, you're allergic. This all has to do with our DNA. We are genetically predisposed to our allergies. So unfortunately, we're left to deal with a mountain cedar allergy year after year. 
Some people swear by natural allergy drops or even a tea made from the female mountain cedar juniper berries. While there's no hard evidence that these natural remedies work. If it makes you feel better, you know, that's okay too. You know, there's no harm in doing those things. The most common and effective treatment for seasonal allergies are over-the-counter medications. But if you just are taking everything over the counter and you're just not functioning well, you can't sleep, you can't go to work, then I would definitely get to see an allergist right away. Allergists like Dr. Dilly can provide steroids to relieve severe symptoms. And doctors can also provide the only proven long-term way to reduce a severe allergic reaction, allergy shots. These shots work by desensitizing your immune system. Through the shots, a gradually increasing amount of pollen is introduced into the body. This creates a blocking response, giving you immunity against a severe allergic reaction. And here's some good news. Allergy shots are covered by most insurance providers, though it is best for you to start allergy shots once your deductible has been met. In the city of San Antonio, it is legal to remove cedar trees from your property. And you may want to do this for various reasons. Maybe you'd rather have only oaks on your property. Maybe you just don't like the look of cedars. But if you think a few cedar trees on your land are causing your allergy issues. Remember there are thousands of them around and depending on the prevailing winds that pollen is still gonna get you. So love them or hate them, we've got to learn to live with Texas's most hated, and I would argue, most misunderstood tree. For KSAT Explains, I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey.